welcome to the One More Thing podcast. Today, I am joined with Dr. Troy Doucet. Hey, what's going on? How you doing, doctor? Man, <laughs> Troy's fine, man. You, uh, you don't like to be called doctor? You know, it's... Uh, Doc? Doc. Like Doc Brown? Dr. Deuce, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dr. Deuce. <laughs> that's crazy, but... <laughs> like Dr. Duche. That's right. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah, that happens quite a bit in philosophy class. I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure. No, it's good to be here. Always good to be with you, man. How'd you, uh, how'd you feel this weekend went... Man, I thought it was a great weekend all around, man. The band was on point. I think we're kind of getting into this rhythm, man. Things are happening. Big things are happening. I said it from the stage, and um, I thought the sermon was great. Um, If you do say so yourself. Yeah, if I do (laughs) say so, right? Lots of comments, man. Lots of conversations about it. Um, So a lot of engagement. I think it really uh, hit home. It resonated with some people about, you know, you, you experience doubt and uncertainty, in your life and a lot of modern sort of fundamentalist religion have no space for that it's right. it's all or nothing right with them and so lots of conversations with people in the grand hall just about how this that comment really gave them it's like a weight lifted like wait i can come here and still have doubts and uncertainty about god about my faith and what i was raised in and right and i think giving people that space to be safe, you know, it's 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 huge, man. Yeah. It's huge. It's that's not available everywhere, man. No, it's definitely unique for yeah. sure. It's definitely a unique place. And so, let's let's break down the message just a little bit because you you kind of had two points that kind of led into each other a little bit. Mm-hmm. You, you started off with the uncertainty piece, um, and being very vocal about you know Suncoast being a place for you to ask questions and the uniqueness of that within the Christian world. Um, and, and not to pick on Christianity because all major religions have a fundamentalist oh, yeah. section or faction of, of their, of their camps, you know, and you, you even see that with science and political parties, you know, there's, oh, yeah. there's all si- types of, um, grounding in the certainty of my beliefs. That's right. and it's not just about the beliefs about God, but I think the way you married this idea of being, God doesn't call us to be certain about what we believe. Mm -hmm. You know, he actually really, there's this, and if you read the Bible, there's a lot of passages about uncertainty. Oh, yeah. You know, and um, it's never stated in the Bible. You must be certain about what you believe, and you must hold true to that. There's a lot of questioning, a lot lot of major biblical figures saying, who are you? That's right. Like, I don't know who you are. You claim to be this God and you're not, my life's terrible, right. you know? And this is a conversation that a lot of people have in their suffering. It's like, man, if you're all powerful, all knowing God and you can make all these things happen, why is my life falling apart? That's right. You know, so the, 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 the room, the allowance for uncertainty, the allowance for questioning and doubt should be the role of the church mm-hmm. and walking people through that and and being like hey i don't have the answers That's either right. you know because that is a big thing like people are going to come to you they're going to come to larry asking like i i need to know what you believe about this so That's i right. can i can <laughs> i can believe that too you yeah. know i can adopt that that form of belief there's this like need for certainty and you talked a little bit about that That's right I, I, and i experience it even when i'm giving a lecture in college and philosophy lots of students are really curious as to what do you believe right you right. you you have a phd you're you doctor do say what you believe must be certain mm-hmm. and i i often say you know it it doesn't matter what i believe it mm-hmm. matters what you believe right and how you work through those processes of the ebbs and flows of doubt and, mm-hmm. and uncertainty and so sunday my hope was that you know, I think I said something along the lines of doubt and uncertainty are not enemies of God because they're often conveyed by popular religion, regardless of its mm-hmm. it, its theological bend, as being something to be avoided. To, right. And you just built, need a little bit more faith. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And but we're built neurologically, right, biologically to to like certainty. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean. But where do we have it? Well, nowhere. I mean, even medication we take will have at the end of every commercial. Sure. And the side effects could be this, 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 and death. And death. And That's always like, my favorite. I still, I still want it. <laughs> I'll I roll the dice. It. I'll roll it. Yeah. And uh, But with, with God, 
I think doubt and uncertainty go against sort of those scientific or biological, neurological sort of synapses in our brain. Like we get a reward when we predict things right. And it mm -hmm. makes us want to predict more things right. right. You know, if I, if I sit down and the chair holds me, I trust other chairs. Right. But it's really strange the way the, the brain works when we have uncertainty. Mm -hmm. it, it sort of clogs our, our purview, right? Any th things that may be important mm -hmm. become unimportant because I'm uncertain about this one thing. And so with that, we often have that fight or flight right. mentality. I'm going to fight against uncertainty by saying no, no, no. Like science will try to discount religious faith in certain ways in that that fight mentality. Like right. Science is the only thing that gives us absolute proof. Mm -hmm. Wrong. Mm -hmm. There are other there are other elements and questions which science aren't scientists aren't really necessarily engaging or entertained by. Right. And then it's the flight mentality, which is typical of religion, right? Most people, if there is uncertainty in something that they've held true, for example, like the inerrancy of the Bible, like the Bible is a hundred percent true and inerrant, no mistakes, no contradictions from leather to leather, right? right. If you show them something that really contradicts that, mm -hmm. then it's a flight mentality. I right. can't be a part of that. In other words, relationships could be lost. Right. They'll, they'll, they'll leave. They'll, they'll fly away from it, fight. Instead of sitting there and fight and having a debate, mm -hmm. it's a flight mentality. Yeah. But the church should be that space where, particularly when we're talking about an entity like God, like mm -hmm. the transcendental <laughs> other, right? right? The, you know, the divinity. The most mysterious the, uh, thing. Like, yeah. Like in, how can... Yeah. How, Everything we project to be certain about God are, are basically things we're certain about ourselves. We have knowledge. Right. We have a presence. Yes. It's the personification of God. You've talked about this. Oh, yeah. You know, over we talk about God looking, you know, down hearing, on us, seeing. hearing, seeing. We've yeah. personified this this entity that we don't really know That's anything right. about. And you know, going back to the scientific method, you can't scientifically prove that there is a God, but you can't scientifically prove that there's not a God. So it's like, right. how do you balance that whole, that whole situation? Well, really it's, it's about this belief that I've built my life around. Yeah. Um, and the experiences that I've had and that I know to be true for me. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's the, the experiences of God that I, I've, I've had in my life. I, I can't explain. Yeah. But there's something there. There's a connectivity that it's like this glue that binds us all together. That's right. You know, and your story with the Christmas Day. Um, the truce, yeah. Truce. That was a, I, I don't know that I've ever seen a story that's more telling of God yeah. than right there. Right there. You know, you have these two enemies. And I love how you say, like, they're entrenched. They're, they're literally yeah. in trenches. And there's certainty that what they're fighting for is, is, right. is right and true. Yep. And they... Put that aside and, you know, to expand on that story yeah, a little yeah. bit, you know, they, they not only played soccer, they traded gifts. Yep. They, they sang together. They ate together. They yep. spent some of the, and, and this does, it wasn't just one isolated event. It happened oh. a couple of different yeah. battlefields it broke out yeah. and they spent this day together. And for some of the soldiers, cause like put yourself in that position, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you and me were on opposite sides and we like spend the day together on Christmas, this magical day. And then we have to go back and we like, I'm like, man, Troy's a really cool dude. Yeah. I really like him. He's like me. We have a lot of common interests. And then we have to go back and fight. And some of those soldiers, they didn't do it. That's right. They said, no, we're not fighting. I'm not going to shoot Troy. That's right. And what happened to them is their generals ordered that they be killed. That's right. So they died. And that, and that, moment right there that shows me there's something more than just biology that's right there's something more to this whole existence than just because our human like our human need to survive usually transcends all oh yeah right i'm going to fight as hard as i can to keep my life protected that's and right. in that moment they said no that's right i'd rather die than kill troy that's right and notice where that that mandate came from right the higher ups right the higher authorities the, the 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 overseeing officers who were deeply entrenched in their own sort of ideology and certainty right 
said, you're going to fight, you're going to shoot. I don't care if you made friends with this guy. I don't care if you humanized him, but he's the enemy. And I mean, that's in every realm, right? That's mm-hmm. in every realm. It's, I mean, we see fights breaking out at sporting events between right. competing you know, sides and political mm-hmm. unrest. And right. religion, though, I think is the king of all because, sure. because you can have two Christians. Yeah. Who, who believe in the same God, the, the same, same God, Bible, yeah, same everything, and be vehemently mm-hmm. certain about a certain you know, doctrine or whatever, and right. like never speak again. Right. And like, it's just, it's, it's, un, it's unreal. I, well, I think the impactful thing about what you said, and I, and I truly believe this is the role of the church right now, and this is what you kind of end, you, you wore your unity shirt. Yeah. You know, this is the role of the church. This is the message that the church should be pushing out, not this us versus them message that has been prolificated through the church, but it should be, no, 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 we are united and we are bound together by this entity that we believe to be God. Mm -hmm. And despite us having different beliefs about existence, politics, whatever, we, what transcends all of that is that we are humans and we're all loved by God and we are all under God's grace. That is a really important message. Yep. And I, I really, truly believe that's the message, message that the world needs to hear. Like, we need to be unified, and the only way to do that is through conversation. That's right. Sitting down and having a conversation and realize, and this is what, this is the beauty, this is the miracle mm-hmm. of the Christmas Day um, truce. truce. Yeah. Is like, they were enemies. They were sure that's right. but those are the bad guys over there. And yeah. one conversation, they're like, oh. Yeah, it's a great question to ask, man. Like, what... What aspect of those two sides is more is more in tune mm-hmm. to what God's hope for humanity was? The bullets flying at each other? Right. Or the camaraderie and unity mm-hmm. of playing soccer, mm-hmm. sharing a meal, trading a cigar for whiskey or whatever. And then basically going, I'm not gonna sh- I'm not shooting. Yeah. Or the other side going, no, you have to, like, which one represents the heart of God for his creation? And I think the answer is, if it's not apparent to you, then the problem's not with God. The problem's with your interpretation of of what you think God wants, right? right? So No, I I, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. And I think that's, you know, one of the challenges that I would give to people of Suncoast, find somebody that doesn't, that you've deemed the enemy. Oh, yeah somebody that you've deemed um, on the other side yeah, and just sit down and have a conversation with them. Civil. That's right. Not to change their mind, not to get into a debate. If I come to you and I'm, I'm a conservative and you're a bleeding heart liberal. That's right. And we just sit down and have a conversation. I don't think it should be centered around politics, right? No. I think it's just like, what's your background? Yeah. Where'd you come from? Who tell are your me parents? You. Tell, yeah. me, tell me about your upbringing. And the minute you humanize that person, that individual, and you realize, man, they're not who I thought they were. That's right. Same with like a Christian sitting down with a Muslim, like I've deemed you my enemy because you believe in a different God. That's you, do, right. you believe in the wrong God. Yeah. And then when you put that human uh, person in that, in that space and you're like, okay, this conversation has shifted. You, you talk about proximity. Yeah. I'm, in my, I'm in this close proximity with right. this person now, and I've humanized them. They are no longer my enemy. They That's are right. my friend. Yeah. I, I, that would be a challenge that I would, I would challenge anybody to do. Oh. And they, people should be welcoming yeah. that opportunity, right? Because all challenges are really just opportunities for us to grow. Mm-hmm. And that's really where I was trying to go. And the way you said it is way more eloquent than the way I put it, is that doubt and uncertainty occur when my thinking, and my thinking is always based on my own experience, my own education, my own subjectivity, when my thinking has reached its limit, right? right? That's usually when doubt and uncertainty kick in. It's like, I, I don't know what else to think. Jeez. Mm-hmm. I never read those two scriptures side by side and saw that they're actually contradicting each other. So I've reached a certain limit. And it's at that point, fight or flight takes in. I'm right. going to reject this and just or I'm going to fight against it in some way. When in fact, like I said, those are instruments that God uses to say, maybe, just maybe, the world, your world is not the world. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, My world is not the world. And the way that reality is constituted is not totally based on my own inner subjectivity. Mm -hmm. And 
what that means practically is I need to meet more people yeah. who are not like me, yeah. right? I need to hang out with people who are not like me. Or I need to listen to people, listen mm -hmm. to podcasts, listen to YouTube, TED Talks mm -hmm. of different variations, even if it goes against what I've held to be true for so long. Because mm -hmm. that's how my own deconstruction happened, man. I just began to read other guys who... These guys can't be dumb. Mm -hmm. They can't be. They can't all all be of the devil, right, you know. Like, right. and when you, again, when you humanize that, when you come into a certain proximity, I think it betrays those those perspectives mm -hmm. that we've held as certain. Yeah, and that's a good thing, man. It should be a natural thing. It will, and that's where, like you said, where growth happens. You know, mm -hmm. this opportunity to have a conversation with somebody that has completely different beliefs than you do. Yeah. And the challenge of finding what you have in common. That's right. You know, and just because you have a conversation or friends with somebody that has different beliefs in you doesn't mean yeah, man. you're now adopting their beliefs or you're going to convince them of adopting your beliefs. It's It transcends that into this human, human to human connection. And like above all else, you are my brother. Yeah. And you are you are another human with your own experience in life and your upbringing and everything. All of these things that have brought you to this specific point in your life. That's right. And that's what matters the most, that's right? It. And so my role, my my call from from Jesus Himself is to love everyone. That's right. That's it. Period. Don't change their mind. That's right. Don't try to do this. Don't try to do that. Because the thing that when you can truly embody the love of Jesus Christ, that's infectious. Yeah, man. People will be like, what's different about you? That's right. People will be drawn to that. Yeah. And so that's what's the most important, I think. That's a, that's right on, man. So did you leave anything out? Like, were there any stories or anything that you just didn't have time for? No, I think, you know, there were... Could, we could have elaborated more on the, the Christmas truce because mm -hmm. I think that was really the heart of where we were going. It's mm -hmm. like, here's a moment in history. Right. You know, because we talked a little bit about just the, the the episodes in history where people were absolutely certain. And when evidence to the contrary was brought in, those in power, how they rejected that sort of notion. Right. But again, man, it goes back to this idea, you know, God cares about unity more than our certainty mm -hmm. because what I was certain of today can absolutely change tomorrow. And so certainty is always going to be a human sort of conscientious perspective. Whereas as unity, I think there's something divine about that. Agreed. So, yeah, man. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the One More Thing. You did an amazing job this weekend. And Appreciate it, man. Uh, I think this uh, upcoming weekend, Pastor Larry's closing out Epic. Epic. Um, it's been a great series, and I yeah, look forward to the next one. Me too, man. Thanks. Right, thanks.